one major responsibility of a statistician is to communicate the results of statistical analysis. So how do you communicate information, okay? So how do you communicate the result of statistical analysis? Of course, when you are in the academe, you must write a textual, a text, a report, a written report of the summary of your, of your analysis. But you must pay attention to this because usually the, the written report, the text report must always be accompanied by, by visuals, okay? Because visuals help in effectively communicating the information contained in a report. And so, textual reports of analysis of data must be accompanied by tables, charts, graphs, or if you are communicating to the general public, you know, these days what they do now is infographics. And infographics is more than just communicating information, okay? So there is an element of, there's an element of, of graphics design involved in infographics. So I think it's not the statistician himself or herself who will produce the infographics. It should be a professional graphics artist. But the professional graphics artist must get the inputs from a statistician. So these are the visuals that help in effectively conveying information that has uh, that is the result of statistical analysis, tabular reports, okay? So it's a table. So tabular reports, something like this. So tabular reports contain a summary of the characteristics of a data set. The actual design of the table depends on, on the agreed format of an organization. So in LPU, we have our own format here when we are presenting tabular reports. So these are the things to pay attention to when you are producing a tabular report. You must give it a title, okay, a table number. So a textual report may contain more than one table. So that's why you have a, a table number. So you have here the title, the title of your report. You must also write the legend. So the column title, so each column must be given a title and each column contains a specific type of data. So in this one, population, okay, it says here the population of nymphs because they are investigating here uh, the eggs that was spawned by some kind of insects. So it says here population, these are creeks. So these are where the population of insects came from. So the first column is telling you the type of data here is where, okay, where the insects were gathered. The next column is about the mean. This is like the quantity in percent of unfertilized eggs. Okay, the standard deviation, the range, and the size of the sample. You will hear that often in stats, size of the sample. Of course, uh, no scientist can collect all the insects in a pond. So what he gathers is only a subset. That's a sample. And N here is the size. How many insects are there in that subset? So you must pay attention to this, okay? And you may have to produce something like this when, when you are about to do your uh, capstone project or thesis. Another tabular report, and this one is a result of a census. Census by themselves are meaningless. They are just a collection of raw data. You have to process them. And after processing them, this could be one of the initial results. So, again, look at that. Table number, title. Each column is given a title and that is telling you what type of data you have for that column. So, this one are the names of the municipalities from Ilocos region, Ilocos Norte in particular. These are the total populations for the year 1960, so on and so forth. 
Again, the purpose of a table is to help the reader understand the report, the, the result of statistical analysis. So you must be generous about putting the, the important information here. Okay? Help your reader understand what the table is all about. Graphs or line graphs. You use this kind of visuals to convey information about quantities that grow or decrease with the passing of time. We can make inferences about the rates of change, how steep are the curves. That will tell us the rates of change, the past trends, and we can also make some inferences about the future trends of the population being studied by just looking at the line graph. So this line graph, you know what? I did not read the tax report where this graph was taken from. But because this graph is done properly, I can tell what this is all about. This is about, okay, an experiment wherein they are experimenting what is the effect of a salt solution. So before planting a seed, what you do first is you soak it in a salt solution. Will that be good for the seed? And the way they would measure uh, the goodness effect of this solution to the seed is how many days must pass before the seed uh, shows that sprout. And because this line graph is done so well, I can tell. You can tell the result. So look at that. Look at that. This one, okay, look at that. It says there the, the legend, control. So these are the seeds that did not receive or did not get soaked in the salt solution. It's the control. And it looks like, and look at this. This is time. And this is the the number of days that must pass before that, uh, before that sprout reveals itself to the world. For the control group, after 17 days, the seeds that they planted, okay, so maybe 100. So it took them something like, it's saying here 40%. 40% of the seeds in the control group produces a sprout which is somewhere 40, so 40% 40 of the seeds. But for, look at this, the triangle ones. So the triangle ones, they are soaked in a solution that is 1% salt solution. That's the meaning of that. And after 17 days, something like close to 80% of the seeds germinated. Those which were soaked in a 5% salt solution, they, after 17 days, almost like 65% of the seeds germinated. Even though I did not read the textual report of this, of this experiment, you can tell what the experiment is all about, what are the results, if the graph is done properly. Okay, so these are the things to remember for a line graph. Horizontal axis, vertical axis. They must be properly labeled. They must tell you what they are about. You must also tell the, the units of measurement. So this one is in percent. This one is in time, number of days. Use legends, okay? Use legends. It's nice to put them all together here. The control group, the 1% solution, 5% solution, 15% solution, because we can see the comparison right away. We can make a comparative analysis right away. Another line graph. This is about the daily confirmed COVID-19 cases, rolling three-day average. And so this is one good thing about the, the line graph. It tells you the trend. Is there a reason for you to be bothered about, uh, about COVID-19 infection? Well, it depends on the trend. But at least for the United States and for the European Union, this is last year, June, June 16. So look at the trend. There was a massive, rapid spike in COVID-19 cases. And then for Europe, there is also a quick decline in COVID cases. You know what? I, I talk about these things in my other math subjects. Calculus, pre-calculus, exponential growth. You know, it turns out these this virus things, 
They are the kind of things or the or the viral infection thing. They are the kind of thing that grows quickly in short intervals of time, but they are also the same thing that will diminish or decrease dramatically in short intervals of time. And this COVID-19 will eventually subside, but if it does, it's going to be something like this. Rapid decline in COVID-19 infection in short intervals of time. That is how viral infections behave. That is what biology tells us about the behavior of populations of, uh, of viral infections. Bar charts. We use bar charts to show size and magnitude. Look at that. If you are after the size, if you are after the magnitude, you use bar charts. The chart should be self-explanatory. It should be capable of explaining itself as much as possible without the textual report. So this one is the number of journals, of journal articles produced each year. And so the green ones are online journal articles and the red ones are the typical paper, okay? The, the hard, uh, hard copies of journal articles. And this one is the number of journal articles published. So again, they must be properly labeled, the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. Pie charts. So you use pie charts when you are displaying a graphical summary of information that emphasizes the proportion of the subsets in relation to the whole. So something like this can be the sort of information that is being conveyed by a pie chart. It's the distribution of expenses, not in actual uh, worth in terms of pesos, but in terms of proportion. That is what pie charts are for. So these are the distribution of expenses, expenditures on a child from birth through age 17. Okay? Total expenses and budgetary components. 1960 versus 2013. Look at uh, what changed significantly. Look at this. Child care and nutrition. 96. Oh, by the way, this is a U.S. data. Okay? This taken from the United States. So look at the share of child care and education in the budget, in the total expenses of a household from 1960 and compare it with the proportion of the budget that is spent for child care and education. So that is a big change. 